Sanjeev Kumar, I'm a hematologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. On behalf of the co-investigators on the camera test today, I presented the results uh, of the um, phase 1-2 trial uh, that explored the use of sevostimab in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma who are triple plus refractory and have received prior BCMA targeted ADC of CAR T cells. As you all know, we have two bispecific um, antibodies targeting BCMA that is currently approved and one that is targeting uh, GPRC5D. Unfortunately, with these uh, bispecific antibodies, even though we see deep responses, the majority of the patients will eventually relapse, needing newer therapies for continuing control of their underlying disease. Um, Sevostimab is unique in that it targets a third antigen um, called FCRH5 that is expressed exclusively in B-cell lineage cells, particularly in myeloma cells. Now, in the initial phase one study, um, the Sevostimab was shown to have significant activity in patients with relapsed refractory myeloma who have had multiple prior lines of therapy. Given the fact many of these patients currently are receiving um, BCMA-targeted therapy in the clinic, uh, either in the form of bispecific antibodies, CAR T cells, or ADCs, this trial was designed to explore the activity and toxicity of servostimab in this particular patient population. Now, the study had two different cohorts. The cohort A1, which we will be talking about today, um, included patients with prior exposure to BCMA-targeted ADC or CAR T cell, and a second cohort that is currently um, ongoing um, is exploring the uh, use of servostimab in patients who have previously received bispecific antibodies targeting BCMA. Uh, Servostimab is given as IV infusion. Uh, once every three weeks, there is a step-up dosing, which includes a small dose of 0.3 milligrams and 3.3 milligrams uh, given um, day one and then two to four days later. And then the full dose of 160 milligrams is given day eight and then subsequently every three weeks. Um, there were a total of 21 patients enrolled in this study, uh, 10 with prior ADC exposure, 11 with prior CAR T cells. Overall, um, the uh, patient population was heavily pretreated with a median of five to six prior lines of therapy. Um, these patients um, had seen uh, CAR T cells, um, at least 11 of them at the median of about a year. And in the ADC cohort, the time that had elapsed since the last exposure to ADC was only about two months uh, median. Majority of the patients had high risk cytogenetics and almost a third to a half of these patients also had extramilitary disease. Two thirds of the patients were under drug refractory. When you look at the adverse events from this study, um, again, this is at a median for, for about a year. Um, grade three to four adverse events were seen in about 70 to 80 percent, although adverse events leading to uh, discontinuation of therapy was only observed in one patient in each cohort. Now, um, in terms of toxicity, certainly hematological toxicity is very common. Um, we see grade um, again, grade three to four hematological adverse events in about 30 to 40 percent of these patients, predominantly uh, neutropenia. Um, any uh, grade uh, CRS was seen in majority of the patients, but again, uh, predominantly grade one or two. Uh, similarly, grade one ICANS was seen in one patient each, the ADC and the CAR T cohort, and there was one grade four ICANS uh, in the prior ADC cohort that was uh, again. Um, related um, in an individual with prior history of epilepsy. Now, the other adverse event of interest in patients receiving bispecific antibodies are the infections. About a quarter of the patients had grade three infections, third of the infections were viral in nature, including COVID in most, um, about a third had bacterial, and in another third, the pathogen was not identified. When you look at the cytokine release syndrome, 90% uh, of the patients in the prior ADC and 55% of the patients in the prior CAR T cell group had cytokine release syndrome. And the higher rate in the ADC group is likely a reflection of the more advanced disease and more tumor bulk in those patients. Tocilizumab was used in about half of the patients and CRS was mostly seen within the first 24 hours and median duration of CRS was about a day. When you look at the response rates, you can see that the overall response rate was about 67%, which is, again, um, um, 
included a third of the patients in a very good partial uh, response. Um, the overall response rate was a bit higher in the CAR T cell, particularly the you know, proportion of patients with VGPR, again, likely a reflection of the less advanced disease compared to the prior ADC cohort in this study. Now, the treatment duration data is limited, given that we only have a median of 11 months of follow-up and 21 patients on the study, but it is important to note that their responses were seen in patients who are refractory to prior anti-PCMA agents um, and those with extra medullary disease. And obviously, with longer follow-up, we have a better sense of the durability of these responses. Correlative studies were performed. FCRH5 expression was seen uniformly across all the uh, myeloma cells and across all the patients. Um, to the extent it's um, relevant, um, the expression of BCMA was, uh, in fact, a bit reduced in this cohort of patients, uh, which, again, may reflect their prior exposure to anti-BCMA targeted agents. Uh, we looked at the peak plasma IL-6 level, again, as a reflection of the CRS, and as expected, uh, given the higher uh, rate of CRS in the prior ADC group, there was a high, more of an elevation of IL-6 in those patients. And of course, um, the IL-6 levels were higher in those people with CRS in general. Um, the specifically uh, correlative studies looked at some of the effector cell, immune cells, uh, but like the trans and B positive cells and found that these were much higher in the responders versus the non-responders at cycle four. So in conclusion, Savostanib is quite active. It's an active by specific antibody. It's active in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma, particularly in the study, we see the activity in patients who are um, who have had prior BCMA targeted ADC or CAR T cell therapy. Again, the adverse events are quite consistent with what we have seen before. CRS was mostly grade one or two. And given that FCRH5 is, is abundantly expressed on myeloma cells, this should be have activity in the majority of the patients. So I think ongoing studies will better clarify where we use these um, by specific antibodies uh, targeting uh, FCRH5, um, there clearly might be a role in the upfront setting in combinations and certainly in the later lines of therapy in patients who have seen BCMA targeted uh, therapies. So I would like to acknowledge um, the patients, families, other investigators, as well as the sponsors for the study, which is uh, Hoffman-Laroche.